Hello, Sammy. Um, I heard from Shelby you wanted me to read you a story at bedtime. I'm happy to do that for any little girl who can imagine having as many little brothers and sisters as you can. I'm going to read Snow White and the Seven Dwarves from Walt Disney's motion picture Snow White and the Seven Dwarves adapted from Grimm's Fairy Tales. Once in midwinter, when the snowflakes were falling from the sky like feathers, a queen sat sewing at the window with an ebony frame. As she was sewing and looking out at the snowflakes, she pricked her finger with the needle and three drops of blood fell on the snow. The red looked so beautiful on the snow, white snow that she thought to herself, if only I had a child as white as snow and as red as blood and as black as the wood of my window frame. Some time later she gave birth to a daughter who was as white as snow and as red as blood and her hair was as black as ebony. They called her Snow White and when she was born the queen died. A year later the lonely king took a second wife. She was beautiful but she was cruel and jealous and she couldn't bear the thought that anyone might be more beautiful than she. She had a magic mirror and every day when she looked into it, she asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? And the mirror answered, You, O oh queen, are the fairest in the land. That set her mind at rest, for she knew the mirror told the truth. But as Snow White grew, she became more and more beautiful, and this queen feared that someday the girl would be the fairest in the land. So she dressed Snow White in rags, and forced her to live with the servants and to slave from sunrise to sundown. All the while that Snow White cheerfully scrubbed floors and dusted and carried water from the well, she dreamed that her Prince Charming would come and carry her off to his castle in the clouds. One day, as she was drawing water from the well, her friends the pigeons told her a secret. It was really a wishing well. Make a wish into the well, they said, and if you hear it echo, your wish will come true. Snow White spoke into the well. I'm wishing for the one I love to find me today. Before the echo could repeat the whole wish, a handsome prince on horseback rode up and saw Snow White. He looked at her with such admiration that Snow White grew embarrassed and ran off to her room. But the jealous queen had been watching from her window, and she turned yellow and green with envy. Looking into her mirror, she demanded, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? And this time the mirror replied, Her lips blood red, her hair like night, her skin like snow, her name Snow White. The queen was in a terrible temper, and she sent for her huntsman. Get that child out of my sight, she stormed. Take her far into the forest, kill her, and bring me back her heart in this box to prove you have done it. The huntsman was saddened at these words, but he did not dare to disobey his queen. He took Snow White deep into the forest, and he watched her happily picking wildflowers, and he knew he could not hurt this lovely girl. Kneeling before Snow White, he said, I cannot kill you as the queen commanded. Run away and hide, but do not come back to the palace because the wicked queen will surely harm you. The huntsman left Snow White then, and on his way home he killed a young boar and put its heart in the box for the queen as proof that he had carried out her orders. Alone in the great forest, Snow White was frightened by everything she saw, every strange sound she heard. She ran and ran until just before nightfall she saw a tiny cottage not much larger than a doll's house. No one was at home, so she opened the little door and went in.
there were seven dusty little chairs and seven dirty little dishes and seven little shirts that needed washing and dirt and cobwebs everywhere. From the look of this place, it belongs to seven untidy little children, Snow White said. And she went about sweeping and cleaning and scrubbing and laundering, all with the help of some friendly woodland creatures who had followed her. They sang and danced and whistled while they worked, and in no time at all, the little house was spotless. Then Snow White went upstairs where she found seven little beds, each with a name card on it. Doc, Happy, Sneezy, Dopey, Grumpy, Bashful, Sleepy. What funny names for children, said Snow White as she yawned. I'm a little sleepy myself. And flopping down across the bed, she, found sound, she fell sound asleep. When it was quite dark, the owners of the little house came home. Their picks and shovels, they were seven dwarfs who went off to the mountains every day with their picks and shovels to mine diamonds. They no sooner had lighted their seven candles than they saw someone had been in their house. The whole place is clean, Doc exclaimed. There's dirty work afoot, growled Grumpy. Cautiously they tiptoed up the stairs where they found Snow White asleep on their beds. What is it? Bashful and Happy asked. Why, said Doc, I think it's a girl. She's mighty purty, Sneezy said. Bashful sighed. She's beautiful, like an angel. At that, Snow White woke up. When she saw the seven dwarfs, she startled. Why, you're not children at all. You're little men, she exclaimed. But they were friendly and asked her name and how she came to their house. Snow White told them how her stepmother had tried to have her killed and that the huntsman had spared her life. The queen will never find me here if you let me stay. I'll keep house for you and do the cooking Make the beds, wash and sew, she promised. The dwarfs whispered together, and then they said, If you keep everything neat and clean, you can stay with us, and you'll want for nothing. So Snow White stayed and kept the house in order. In the morning, the dwarfs went off to look for diamonds, and in the evening when they came home, dinner was ready. Snow White was all alone all day, and the kindly dwarfs warned her, Watch out for your stepmother! She's full of black magic and she knows everything. Don't let anyone in while we're away. In the meantime, the queen had been given the box with the heart, which she believed was Snow White's. She felt sure she was again the most beautiful of all. One day she went to her mirror and asked, Magic mirror on the wall, who now is the fairest one of all? But the truthful mirror answered, over the seven jeweled hills, beyond the seventh fall, in the cottage of the seven dwarves, dwells Snow White, fairest one of all. Then the queen stamped her foot in a fury. The huntsman had tricked her, and Snow White still lived. As long as the girl lived, the queen could not be the fairest one of all, and she had to be, or jealousy would leave her no peace. At last she thought up a plan. She strained her face and hands and dressed in black rags like a toothless old peddler woman. No one would ever recognize her. She went to a secret room that no one else knew about, and there she made a poisoned apple. It was beautiful, juicy looking, shiny red, and anyone who saw it would want a bite. But one taste, and the person's eyes would close forever in the sleeping death. Pleased with herself, the queen made her way to the little cottage in the forest. Hiding behind a tree, she watched the seven dwarves say goodbye to Snow White. Don't let anyone in the house they warned her. Then they marched off to their mountain, singing, Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. No sooner were the dwarves out of sight than the ragged old woman went to the window and asked Snow White for a drink of water. Thank you, my pet, she said. 
when the girl handed it to her through the window. Now here's an apple for you. And she cackled wickedly. Wait till you taste it, dearie. It's delicious. Snow White reached for the poisoned apple. Though her friends, the woodland creatures, tried to keep it from her. No sooner had she taken a bite than she fell to the floor as if dead. The birds and the animals hurried through the forest to fetch the dwarves while the queen laughed. Now I'll be the fairest in the land, she said as she slipped away into the forest. The dwarves dashed up to the cottage too late to save Snow White. But they saw the wicked queen running into the woods and they ran after her as fast as their little legs would carry them. They chased her to the top of a high cliff, and there the queen tripped and plunged over the edge. With a terrible scream, she vanished forever. Sadly, the dwarves returned home. Ho heartbroken, they looked at their beautiful Snow White, her cheeks and lips still red, as if she were asleep. The dwarves made a crystal coffin for Snow White and set it in a glade in the forest. Night and day, they kept watch over it. A long time passed, and one day, Prince Charming heard about the beautiful princess asleep in the forest. He wondered if it was the girl he had lost his heart to long ago near the wishing well, and whom he had been seeking ever since. He rode deep into the woods where he found her, the princess he loved truly. Leaning over, he kissed her lips. Snow White opened her eyes as if awakening from a deep sleep. The spell of the poison apple had been broken by love's first kiss. And Snow White's dearest wish came true. Her prince rode off with her to his castle in the clouds, amid the cheers and good wishes of the dwarfs and forest creatures. Good night, Sammy.